Today I want to go over the epic siege equipment that was just added in game, along with a few other things that were not mentioned in the patch notes. So stick around in this video for the things that were listed and the things that were not listed in the recent changes to Rise of Kingdoms. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and every time we get an update in Rise of Kingdoms, there's a little bit of a mystery putting together the pieces, doing the digging and exploration to find the things that weren't listed in the update notes, and there's usually something. Sometimes it's just inconsequential where it's like, oh, I mean, hey, look, there's, you know, a, maybe a city theme or a, a cosmetic that tells us about an event that's to come, but in this case, it's epic equipment changes to the state forum, and also changes to ranged combat. Uh, most of those changes to ranged combat, by the way, have in fact been listed. So I want to go over some of these things that weren't broadcasted, such as this epic equipment. Now, in the recent update video from the developers that I talked about, they teased legendary quality siege equipment with 1% stat values. It's not the first time the developers have teased equipment without giving it to us. Um, in fact, there was equipment ages ago that never made it into the game. It was lower level legendary equipment. Now, low level legendary equipment is total nonsense when you think about the way that uh, legendary equipment works. I mean, you can't dismantle it. So you're stuck with it forever. You'd never wanna make low level stuff. But this epic siege equipment is really interesting. It's giving a bunch of different stats, and unlike other equipment where they give you a variety of stats, they don't do that here. They they focus really almost entirely on buffing your siege. So, for example, most weapons at the epic tier in Rise of Kingdoms will give you a bunch of irrelevant stats, okay? As, as if mixed troops were a thing, and it really isn't. Um, that is true for the main troop types in the game. But this siege weapon gives you siege unit march speed. Which is, I mean, look, it ain't much, okay? But it is relevant. Uh, it's actually quite relevant. So that's a nice little boost. And there are, by the way, epics for every slot. Here's the helmet, dope-looking helmet. 8% uh, siege unit health and 2% march speed. The chest piece, giving 8% siege unit attack, 2% march speed. The gloves, giving... 5.5% defense, 2% march speed. So you can see why I'm saying like, yeah, it's not a ton, but it is mostly relevant. Here they did damage to barbarians, which like, I don't know, man, that's so irrelevant. They must know that's what they're doing. 8% uh, siege unit defense and then irrelevant damage to barbarians. From here, more irrelevant damage to barbarians and siege unit health. Uh, and that is the six slots for which they added things for siege that you actually can see. Now, the funny thing is, is you may say, okay, Chiskul, let's go get this equipment. Well, it says it comes from the tavern. You have to be in the season of conquest. This is KVK season four and beyond. So it's interesting, obtained from a tavern chest while in a season of conquest. I don't know why you would need to be in a season of conquest, but if I go to my tavern and I get a look, it's not in the equipment crates. It's not here. Um, and I, I, you know, I scoured through to say like, okay, where is it? Well, well, if it's not here, maybe they just didn't update the display, but that's, that's probably not right. I feel like they would have updated the display. It's not in the gold keys. It's not in the silver keys. They said the tavern. I mean, is it in the legendary crates? I don't think it's in the legendary crates, although I guess it doesn't tell me what is in these crates. That's kind of weird. Shouldn't it say what's in the legendary crates? Oh, here we go. Here it's telling me you can get sculptures. There's nothing here about equipment. So I don't know where you get this epic equipment from, but I would save your crystal keys if you're at all interested in making these siege marches because the developers seem to be alluding to it being in these crystal keys. If it's not there now, then it might be there later. And although there was a mail that went out listing a bunch of changes, one change that wasn't listed was a stealth buff to the state forum. Now, a buff to the state forum is something you're very interested in seeing. I'm very interested in seeing, right? And it's a, a buff to the major dispatch chance. Now, the major dispatch chance used to top out at 1.5% all the way up here. But now the base value is 1.5%. 
it goes up to 2%, then 2.5%, and then all the way to 3%. So if I'm remembering correctly, they've actually doubled the maximum major dispatch chance that you can unlock by getting your state form to 25. Does that mean you should rush your state form to 25? I still don't think that's the case necessarily. I think that 23 is a pretty good place to land, giving you 19 travel chances, 8 daily dispatch chances, and 2.5% of a major dispatch chance. That to me seems like a very reasonable place to land, especially considering that it's like almost 100,000 gems to get to the next tier. I think it kind of sucks, uh, quite frankly. Um, it, it's a bit of a feel bad when you open a dispatch chest and you're like, okay, I'm really hyped to get an armament and I hope it's good. And you get a hundred sages testimonies. It's kind of like, really? But if you think about it as gems, I just got a thousand gems. That would be why you don't want to get to 25 with your state forum. If you're holding back, if you're gem constrained, because then at least you are getting like gem value, whereas realistically, most of the time, when you open your dispatch uh, chest over here, what are you going to get? I mean, bruh, you're probably getting trash and you're going to just dismantle it anyways for an irrelevantly tiny amount of currency. So um, getting a very relevant 1000 gems feels bad at the time that it happens, but when you actually think about it is quite good. So all that to say, the dispatch chance was changed, but I don't think that means you need to rush your state forum up to the maximum level. By the way, if you've learned something new today that you hadn't already found in-game, consider subscribing to the channel and joining my Discord server, linked in the description. That's discord.gg slash chiskool. If you were in my elite guard, you already knew about this change before I even made the video, because that's where it was brought to my attention. So a big shout out to my elite guard for finding this change to the major dispatch chance. But from here, we should review what the developers sent out. And here is what they said. By the way, what is this? PayPal issues fixed. Huh. I guess that's with the PC version. So they made some ranged attack adjustments in the game. Um, since the launch of the formation system, players have created many new strategies by selecting the V formation for their commanders and switching their troops into range mode. I would say this is much more true of non-Imperium KVKs, where I think it's m more common to see ranged. We really don't see much range at all in Imperium KVKs, which, are, which is where they're really pushing the best of the best. The the real end game is what you see there. And I think more casual kingdoms, you can use these range strategies and they can be far more effective because you're not going to get punished by just a huge group of people that attacks all in a coordinated way at the same time hitting the same place, wrecking your ranged marches. Just my guess. Uh, but to provide you with a better strategic experience, we're making the following adjustments. Ranged attack. They adjusted the damage of ranged attacks and the counterattack damage taken by ranged units. When a troop launches ranged attacks against the target troop in a range mode, it will severely wound units. Well, this is really interesting. Now ranged combat is a lot more serious. You can inflict severe wounds, not just slight wounds. At the same time, troops launching ranged attacks now take a small amount of counterattack damage. So this is very interesting. You can now inflict Sev Wounds, which does make range far more serious of a threat. Now range combat is costing you resources when you're on the receiving end. However, however, um, now they're going to take some amount of counterattack. How much counterattack is definitely an interesting question. They've also adjusted the kill points and the kill statistics on the governor profile page. When troops perform ranged attacks, if they severely wound or kill a battle unit, now, how do you kill a battle unit? How would a ranged troop kill a battle unit? I actually don't know how you would kill. Oh, I guess if somebody's hospital is overflowing. Because um, like it's not like uh, you can rally into someone who's in range formation. Like It doesn't work that way. But I suppose if you're overflowing somebody's hospital, you'll kill their troops. Now they're going to receive kill points but not ranged points every time you inflict a sev wound. Okay, and when troops perform ranged attacks, they will still receive range points if they are in a battle scene where they can only slightly wound units. I still don't quite understand what the battle scene would be where you can only slightly wound units, but okay. Maybe I just need to think about this more. Definitely leave a comment down below if you know exactly how this works. And they've modified the rule description of kill points and statistics 
according to those adjustments above. Now, commanders can have the engineering talent tree. This is the range commanders. And new commanders with the engineering talent. Um, commanders with the engineering talent excel in leading siege units and switching their troops into an attack for range mode. By the way, I have covered this in multiple videos, but if you want to see a detailed video revealing the entirety of the engineering tree, uh, Carl will be up in the top, and I'll remind you in the end of this video in the end screen. Now, when the V formation is used, only commanders with engineering talents can actually use their active skills. Um, and so this basically means the literal only relevant armament for the range formation is the ones that have full siege stats because all the range commanders only use the siege troop type. Heraclius, the commander with leadership talents, and Bobber and Margaret, commanders with engineering talents, are coming soon. Uh, the Margaret Invictus event is coming soon. This is an event I covered in a previous video where you can unlock Margaret for free or buy your way to more of her sculptures. Um, governors who are new or in the season of conquest can get the sculptures and other awesome rewards. Still, I think the best guess for where Margaret will end in her final resting place for unlocking is probably gold keys. So save your gold keys if you're at all interested in working on Margaret's sculptures. It's obviously not a guarantee, but that's my best guess. Um, it is possible they instead add her to the legendary tavern. I, I guess they could go that route, uh, but that would be a very, very slow unlock process. Now, the Commander Gift event is coming soon. Complete quests during the event to earn Margaret sculptures and other awesome rewards. Now, the Engineering Equipment, they say they've added epic engineering equipment. The good news is you can always dismantle it, right? The bad news is that I don't know how you get it yet. Um, when you get an exclusive special talent equipment, you can now choose the engineering talent. And the daily login for gifts event is coming soon. During this event, governors who are new or are in the season of conquest can log in to receive epic engineering equipment blueprints. So that's how you'll get them in the short term. Long term, I think they are going to arrive in crystal keys. They just aren't there yet. So again, hang on to those crystal keys if you haven't already. And keep in mind... There's going to be legendary siege equipment, which I think will probably be added to events like the Holy Knight's Treasure and the Hunt for History. Now, if you wanted to see the changes that they were describing to kill points and ranged kill points, if we get a look over here, you can see I have zero ranged kill points. And uh, <laughs> for now, that's a number that I'm prideful of. Zero is the number. I feel good about that. Uh, but this is where you'll start to accumulate them. Now, if I hit the question mark over here, it does explain um, more in depth how this works. So if you're in a scenario battle where ranged attacks can only slightly wound units, whenever you kill or severely wound an enemy's troop unit, uh, e.g. using a melee troop, while you're also attacking it with a ranged troop, you will earn ranged points. Ranged points are calculated separately from normal points. The more ranged damage you deal, and the more enemy units killed or severely wounded, the more ranged points you'll earn. Ranged combat is something that is going to be relevant in this game. Like it or not, I think it will be relevant. The developers have added it, and if it's not relevant now, all they have to do is tweak it until it is. And they wouldn't have added it if they didn't want to make it relevant. So we'll see how the use evolves in Imperium Kingdoms versus Normal Kingdoms, but my suspicion is that it is going to be super important eventually to consider using a ranged march. Whether that's on a farm that you sort of play while you play your main um, and you just sit there with a range tower or potentially doing it on your main, this will potentially give new life to siege units with one huge problem, actually many. Um, the, the problem is that still siege units are a weird unit to have. And I explained this in another video recently where Siege units are countered by every troop type, which is definitely a bummer, and there's no good garrison to deploy your siege to. So if you're at all in a competitive kingdom where you need to kill off your troops or risk being removed from your kingdom for low contribution, siege kind of suck to have because they're not really good to put into any garrison. You'll throw them into something because you have them, uh, but it was the, it is currently the only troop type in the game that you can accumulate but not effectively remove other than non-optimal ways. Of course, this could change with the release of Heraclius, although we still don't know 
what his skills actually look like. He's not yet visible, and he may only become visible when this Mightiest Governor cycle comes around, which is very soon. I do plan to unlock Heraclius. I can't tell you if I'll be expertising him, but if he's decent, and I think he's going to be really good or meta for city defense, then I will probably expertise him almost right away at the first opportunity. So consider subscribing to the channel if that's the sort of thing that you want to see. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're interested in checking out the engineering talent trees or other things with ranged commanders. I'll have two videos, cards in the end screen in just a second.